oil. When something tries to stop you, hold you down, it doesn't have a chance. In your imagination, you just twist and turn and see that sliding off. You are uncontainable. But some of you today have gotten complacent and you've settled where you are. You believe those lies that you've gone as far as you can go. You've made too many mistakes. You come from the wrong family. You've got this handicap. Now I'm here to infect you with a virus. It's a good virus, a God virus. It says you were made for more, to influence more, to accomplish more, love more, to give more, to have more. Friends, I've got to warn you today, I'm highly contagious and I'm infecting you with faith. I'm infecting you with vision. I'm infecting you with joy. God is saying you have not touched the surface of what He has in store for you. He is going to take you places that you've never dreamed of. He's going to bring opportunities that give you amazing influence. You have not seen your best days. They are still out in front of you. Now you've got to dig your heels in and say, I will not be contained by people, by the way I was raised, by mistakes I've made, by some injustice, disappointment, or even handicap. No, I have my mind made up. Where I am is not where I'm staying. I'm rising higher. I'm going to be a barrier breaker. I'm going to take new ground for God's kingdom. It's time for us as God's people to rise up and become leaders and have influence and respect and credibility, not just in our own circle, but in the marketplace. That means in the general public, in the schools, in the government, arts, sports, entertainment. We're not supposed to hide our gifts and go around feeling like we're second class and we don't have that much to offer. Well, put your shoulders back. Hold your head up high. You are a child of the Most High God. God breathed His life into you. You have something incredible to offer. And in the coming days, God is going to increase your influence. I love the story in Acts chapter 4. Peter and John had prayed for people and they had gotten well. Great miracles had taken place. They had a big service and all kinds of good things happened. But the city leaders didn't know what to do with them. They weren't for them. They didn't fit in their box. Instead of being happy about it, they said in Acts 4, verses 16 and 17, we cannot deny that a notable miracle has taken place. But here's our plan that it spread no further. They were saying, in effect, we're just going to push them down, lessen their influence, and try to contain them. But Peter and John understood this principle. They knew we cannot be contained. The dream God put in our heart, as long as we stay in faith, nothing can shut it down. And that message was not restricted. It spread like wildfire, and here we're still talking about it today. What am I saying? You cannot be contained. People may try to push you down. Somebody may try to discourage you and close some doors. But if you'll just keep pressing forward, shaking that off, God will open up doors that no man can shut. God will raise you up even though somebody else is trying to push you down. I think about Nelson Mandela. He was put in prison because he opposed the government of apartheid. The leaders thought they had finally gotten rid of him. They wouldn't have to deal with his opposition anymore. Mr. Mandela could have thought, well, I did my best. I gave it my all. I guess it wasn't meant to be. No, Nelson Mandela knew he couldn't be contained by people, by injustice, by racism, by hatred, even by prison walls. 27 years later, he walked out a free man. Eventually, he became president of that same country and won the Nobel Peace Prize. Friends, what God has destined for your life will come to fulfillment. But some of you think you've got too many obstacles and you've had too many closed doors and it's been too long. You don't see how it could ever happen. Now you've got to get your fire back. Get your dream back. It may look impossible, but God is saying that setback cannot contain you. That injustice, that disappointment, that bad break cannot hold you down. If you will get rid of that limited mentality and press forward in faith, God will still get you to where you're supposed to be. That's what happened to the Apostle Paul. He was put in prison for spreading the good news. Paul could have gotten depressed, 
discouraged, given up. Instead, his attitude was, I may not be able to go out and minister, but I do have a pen, I do have a piece of paper, I can write. He ended up writing much of the New Testament from a prison cell. They thought they were containing him, but it did just the opposite. It backfired. Paul had more influence with his writings than he ever did in person. Now I want you to get this down in your spirit. God is going to increase your influence. The scripture talks about how God will cause His light to shine down on us. His face to shine down on us. That's His favor. You need to start expecting this favor as never before. God wants you to be a barrier breaker. He wants you to take new ground for the kingdom. But it seems like in days past, the church has been seen as kind of secondary. That's for people that don't have anything better to do. We fall into that mentality at times. We think, well, not that talented. I don't have too much to offer. And too often, we thought, let us just take the leftovers. We can't afford anything. If you can just give us a discount, if you can just please help us. No influence. No abundant mentality. In fact, this is exactly how my father started out. My dad grew up extremely poor. And he developed a barely get by mentality. He never thought he would have enough. And he certainly never thought he would have any influence. It took him years and years to get rid of a poverty mindset, a second class mentality. One day, he realized what I'm telling you. He didn't have to be contained by how he was raised. Rather, he was created to live an abundant life. He developed a new mindset. I remember one time my father was at a store to buy a suit. When the salesperson found out he was a minister, he said to my father, let me go talk to my manager. Maybe we can give you a minister's discount. Years earlier, my father would have been jumping up and down, rejoicing, God, you're beating my needs. And my dad loved to get a good deal. We're certainly not against that. But he had come through so much poverty and lack and defeat. That just didn't sit well with him. He said, listen, brother, I appreciate you wanting to help me, but i got to tell you, I don't need a minister's discount. I am not a beggar. I'm not looking for a handout. I am not second class. I am a child of the Most High God. I am blessed. I am prosperous. And I am well able to pay the full price. That man looked at him and said, man, I have never met a minister like you. What was that? My father was a barrier breaker. He believed that he could rise higher. And he didn't have to be contained by how he was raised and what he saw modeled growing up. He saw God do amazing things in his life. But too often, God's people have seen themselves as second class and poor and defeated. And let me just barely scrape by. No influence, no respect and credibility like it should be from our peers. But thank God, this is a new day. There's a new generation rising up. People that say, I know who I am, a child of Almighty God. And I don't have to be contained by how I was raised, by what I've seen in the past. I know I am a barrier breaker. I am a person of influence. So I'm going to move forward and take new ground, not just for my family, but I'm going to advance God's kingdom. Friends, it all starts in our thinking. Don't be contained in your mind. Who told you you can't rise any higher? Who told you you'll never be successful? You'll never own that nice house. You'll never be in management. You'll never have any more influence. Those are lies from the enemy. Let me tell you what I know about you. Some of you are going to write a book that will touch millions of people. Mm -hmm. Some of you will develop medicine that will impact our world. Some of you will see your movies at the top of the charts. Some of you will have a ministry that will shake your nation. Some of you will develop software that will revolutionize business. Some of you will start a company that will be a global force in the economy. Some of you will be the next leaders of your community, 